Mm-hmm. There it is. Oh boy. I love it. Just wait for it. Bruh, bruh. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So, it is hump day. I hope you are getting over the hump. I hope you're humping or whatever you do on hump day. I hope your dreams are coming true. Today, the Dallas Cowboys get back on the practice field, getting ready. Ready for the New York stinking Giants and I mean they are stinking they are terrible literally Rashid is wearing a bag over his head and this is an opportunity this is you know what I, it hurts me it hurts me knowing that we lost to the Philadelphia Eagles last week and there's nothing I hate more than losing to the Eagles. But, you know, that's football. The difference between winning and losing is this much. And, you know, I guess I understand Micah Parsons is getting a lot of flack because of uh, his comments after the game. People seem to think that he's accepting losing and he's okay with it, that, you know, we got our participation trophy and things like that. I guess in some regards, the way I look at it is maybe a little differently than the way other people are taking it. If you look at it from the standpoint of the way we were against the Cardinals and the loss and the way we were, of course, with um, the 49ers, at least we went down with a fighting chance of winning the game. Now, we made mistakes. This game for us we didn't have all three phases playing at the best. The games that we truly have done extremely well, we have played well with all three phases. The defense shutting people down, giving the offense the ball with takeaways, special teams, of course, not making mistakes. We made two major mistakes, giving easier drives for the Eagles, you know, with the kicking of the ball out of bounds, with the hands to the face face mask on there. Twice we gave the Eagles the ball on the 40-yard line. We got down to the red zone in the fourth quarter and ended up with only three points. Some of it our fault, some of it the officials' fault. By hook or by crook, we've got to do those things better. It's those little things that are the difference between winning and losing. Now, we can't do anything about the officials, but we can do better with kicking the ball in bounds. We can do better by eliminating the penalties. We can do better by scheming. Now, we've made some mistakes, and this is where I hate to say it, but I told you so, you know, but this is another Dallas Cowboys screw the pooch. The Cowboys, when you look at the players right now that we're having problems with, they're guys that have got new contracts. You look at right now, Terrence Steele recover, and, and I don't blame the players. I don't blame the players, but the Cowboys are always looking for a bargain. They're always looking to uh, save some money in one spot because they screwed the pooch in another. So when you paid Michael Gallup, who was recovering from an ACL, and you decided we're going to pay Michael Gallup $12 million a year, but Amari Cooper, the 21, is too much. That is a complete blunder. To think that you're going to replace Amari Cooper's production with Michael Gallup, who's injured with an ACL. Now, I have hopes that Michael Gallup gets back there where he was. But right now, he doesn't seem to have the confidence. It still seems like he's not quite there. And at the moment, he's a bit of a liability. And you have not replaced that production. I, I think that actually it's a message being sent by signing uh, Martavius Bryant, who's coming off of a five-year substance abuse um, suspension. We'll see what he has. But this is definitely some writing on the wall to say, hey, bro, you got to do better. You got to do better than what you're doing right now because we need production and we need it now. But I will say that the Cowboys are getting better as far as the offensive side of the ball. We still have some problems on the offensive line. You know, when we've only had the offensive line together for three games. Tyron Smith played great this week, surprisingly. We need to put him in bubble wrap. Maybe we should rest him for the next three games for, and save him for the home stretch. Get the young guys some experience. Terrence Steele 
is still recovering from the ACL when again you've gone through and signed him to another contract. He gave up 12 pressures to the Eagles. Now be that against a great pass rusher, but guess what? Come playoff time, you'll be playing great pass rushers. So hopefully he can get better. Now here's where they really screwed the pooch. As much as it hurts, the teams that are being successful in winning Super Bowls do go out and get extra talent. The Cowboys are constantly taking talent away or allocating money maybe where they shouldn't. And the biggest mistake that they're making, they've repeated again. I remember after Kirk Cousins got traded and got a new contract with the Minnesota Vikings. I said, you need to sign Dak Prescott right now. At that time, they could have signed Dak Prescott for under $30 million. But they waited, they waited, they had to franchise tag him. And it ended up being kicking the can down the road where they paid more and more money. I remember saying this at the end of this past season. We need to get this thing done. It's not a question of if. They had to. You cannot because, and, and this is where people are like, you're going to pay a garbage-ass quarterback $59 million. No, it's not $59 million. He's getting paid for that year. That's just on paper. The deal has been $40 million a year, but because the Cowboys mismanage their money, they keep restructuring the contracts. His first year was a $17 million hit. The second year was a $19 million hit. This year, it's a $26 million hit. At some point, that money you keep kicking down the road escalates, and that's where the $59 million goes. In the grand scheme of things, you look at Daniel Jones, who got a $40 million contract, and he's got two TDs, six interceptions, and a torn ACL. Dak Prescott, Daniel Jones same money had the cowboys went ahead and been got this deal done they could have ended up getting this thing done for less now here's where i want to show you guys where we are and this is the problem for the cowboys which is i guess it's a good problem as we go through here let's look at the statistics these are the quarterback statistics by um pro football reference td passes okay the cowboys are moving up the list you know, Dak had three this past week, four the week before. Tua, of course, has 19. Josh Allen has 18. Kirk Cousins has 18, done for the season. Pat Mahomes has 17. Russell Wilson has 16. Jalen Hurts is six with 15. Sam Howe's got 14. C.J. Stroud's got 14. And there you have Dak Prescott at 13. TD passes, exact same number as Justin Herbert. And I say that, Justin Herbert, I want to kind of circle that with you because when you go through yardage here's an interesting stat you go through two of course 2600 i'm not gonna go through all those but then you have dak prescott 2011 yards and justin herbert with 2026 now you think about where we were with the offense where you know mike mccarthy was saying i just want to run the football that they literally ended up putting the curb up on the dallas cowboys offense slowing it down now, because we're unable to really run the football, and Tony Pollard's another issue that we said, we got to get rid of Zeke because we paid him too much money, and you don't replace Zeke. You think you can just plug in Tony Pollard, but that's another issue for another video. All right, so we go to interceptions, something that used to be the death nail for Dak Prescott last year. Sam Howe, Josh Allen, Mac Jones, and Jimmy G all with nine interceptions jimmy g of course did it in six games and is now benched and probably won't see the light of day so it'll be stuck there but he was on pace for about 28 interceptions for the season but josh allen's on pace for 17 currently and has thrown an interception in five straight games five straight games if that was dak prescott oh my god they'd be feasting right now but you got dak prescott down here with five interceptions on the season. Right there with Justin Herbert has four. So you're looking at the numbers for Justin Herbert and Dak Prescott being identical. We've had people say, Justin Herbert, he's generational and stuff. He does, you know, this, that, and the other. He's great. He's so much better than Dak, but their numbers are literally identical. 
Okay. Let's look at something else here. Quarterback compensation. So, again, I believe had the Cowboys been aggressive working on that deal before $50 million came in, that they probably could have gotten Dak Prescott somewhere like Deshaun Watson money, which was $46 million. Um, Pat Mahomes, we know he's going to get a new deal. Josh Allen's going to get, maybe he gets another deal. I don't know. Maybe they need to start talking about getting rid of Josh Allen. Matthew Stafford's at 40, Dak's at 40, Daniel Jones is at 40. And you're beginning to see the end of Matthew Stafford's career. Matthew Stafford, you know, he got his ring. It's great, but he's not the guy that he was. I know uh, ESPN says, well, the Cowboys should go get Matthew Stafford at the end of the year. Well, Matthew Stafford's numbers aren't great right now, and the Cowboys, of course, still own Matthew Stafford. But now, as we look at it, Joe Burrow is the highest paid at $55 million. We had this whole wave. Jalen Hurts got his <clears throat> at 51 then immediately Lamar Jackson got his at 52. Then Justin Herbert got his at 52 and a half. And then Joe Burrow got 55. Now, I'm not suggesting that Dak Prescott's going to become the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. But you've got to look at it and say, Joe Burrow at 52. So you're talking about seven and eight million dollars difference per year and had they gotten this thing done here's the part that that's the killer if you look at Jalen Hurts who's getting 51 million a year okay the way they have done this deal his cap number is like eight million dollars this year so if you had done something like this and said you know what we're not going to pay Dak 26 on the cap this year we're going to pay him eight that's 18 million dollars and with $18 million, the Cowboys could have looked and said, you know what, we're going to get another linebacker since we lost Overshone. Or we could say, you know what, we're going to get another quality of starting offensive lineman. So when Zach Martin and Biotish and, and uh, Tyron Smith are all out, that we've got not an undrafted rookie free agent who's starting on the offensive line against, say, the Cardinals. Maybe you look and say, you know what, um, we understand we overpaid Zeke Elliott and, you know, Zeke is not the guy that he used to be with the burst and all that. But we do have some money to go ahead and pay another one of these running backs that are going to be better to be the, the sledgehammer to go ahead so we don't screw up Tony Pollard. That's what you could have done with that money, which is what other teams are doing. And you have to look at this and say, Tampa Bay was a good team, but they brought in Tom Brady, they brought in Gronk, they brought in Namakin Sue. You could look at the Rams and say they were a good team. They already had Aaron Donald, but they went out, they got Jalen Ramsey and things. They went out and got Odell. They went ahead and got Von Miller and added to the mix and Matthew Stafford. You can look at the Eagles and say they brought in everybody and they made it to the Super Bowl coming up just a little bit short getting the L. But you look at them right now and say they're still, you know, you look at Hassan Reddick, what he's done. You look at what A.J. Brown has done for them. You take those guys off that roster, they're not the team that they are. Jalen Hurts isn't the quarterback that he is. And these things matter. The Cowboys instead will make mistakes where they overpay a guy and then have to make up for it by restructuring the quarterback and getting him to take all the blame and not be able to replace the production. You don't get rid of Cedric Wilson and Amari Cooper and say Michael Gallup and Noah Brown are the same thing. You're just not. You don't go through and say, we had Zeke and Tony Pollard as running backs. We're going to get rid of Zeke, and we're just going to say we just have Tony Pollard. Oh, but we drafted a couple of guys. We got some journeymen, you know, and that's going to be good. It's not good enough. It's not good enough if you're talking about winning Super Bowls. And this is the mistake that Cowboys keep making over and over and over again. And so that's all I can say about that. And unfortunately, it's too late to make up for that mistake. The, the, the numbers are up there now. And what you've done is you've let Dak Prescott bet on Dak. And you don't want to play cards against Dak. Because Dak Prescott right now is headed for 30-plus TDs, 10 or less interceptions. 
4,000 plus yards. And when you look at the landscape of quarterbacks out there where, you know, I guess if you want to say you can get Kirk Cousins who just ruptured his Achilles, you can get Jimmy G, a turnover machine. Maybe you get Matthew Stafford, who's old. Oh, I forgot. We, we, we got a guy. We, we ended up trading for a guy. But are you ready to say that that guy is going to be able to do what Zach's doing right now? I don't know. Anyway. We're going to get out of here and get to work on the Red Brick House. As always, I appreciate you.